It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today we're going to talk about the K100 All SSD NAS by AIFRO. They sent me this unit, they asked me to do this review and I will be completely transparent about this. If I like the product, I get to keep the unit. If I don't like it, I return it to them and I give them my feedback about what I don't like about it. Now since you're seeing this review, you'll know that I like it. I want it to be clear. If I don't like it, I'm never going to show you something that I don't like. I'm never going to show you hardware that I don't think would be useful to you in your home lab to run amazing open source software. So stick with me for this one. I think you're really going to like this. It's a really cool little system. It is super low power, which is one of my goals for 2024. So we're going to get into it right now. So I got sent this new uh, device that somebody wanted me to do a review of, and it's a NAS. It's a network attached storage system. So I want you to see how big it really is. I know that's very difficult with video, but here's my hand next to the box. So it's very small. It's a mini PC, and it's really meant to be used as a NAS storage system, but with NVMe drives. I did want to cover this one. This one's pretty interesting, and I kind of thought the whole thing with NVMe drives being in a NAS was interesting. And I've seen a few others that are making something similar. So if this one has a good price point, I think it's gonna be great. So I wanna give it a, a real solid review. But yeah, I think this is gonna be pretty cool. So we're gonna get into it and I'm gonna do an unboxing here for you. It's not my favorite thing. I'm not real big on unboxings either. I wanna say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. But now the box is pretty solid, the way that it came, and it's a pretty nice packaging system. So you can see here how it comes. Now this is the A-I-F-F-R-O. I think that's IFRO. So uh, it looks like A-I-P-R-O to me. So I wasn't really sure when I first got it, but I believe it's A-I-F-F-R-O and it's the K100 NVMe NAS system. And it's very small. I mean, look at this. This is the palm of my hand and I can literally grip this thing uh, pretty easily. So it's not huge. It's a very small thing. It's gonna be low power, which is great. But in the box, it's got a nice uh, packaging here. It's got a little foam insert, so it sits real nice and tight in the box. And then you can pull this bottom cardboard out and it covers up uh, just your power cable and uh, your power brick, really. So not a ton here, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is really all you need. It's, it's got Wi-Fi, it's got quite a few adapters here as well. So we've got your network adapter, we've got some USB-C, We've got an HDMI and we've got some USB-A, which is pretty great. And really that's it. It's got some venting on the sides, but this is aluminum. This is nice. This is a nice metal case on it. It's got a plastic bottom. Uh, and then of course, got the power button here on the front. Uh, really solid. I mean, it feels really good. It feels like a solid piece of hardware. I really like the build quality so far. Um, I'm gonna have to take these little foot pads off to open it up and actually get the uh, NVMEs inside of it. So we'll do that here in a minute. But overall, yeah, I think this is really kind of nice. It's a very nice, solid feeling piece of hardware. So I took one of the feet off already just so you could see it. And if you'll look, it's, it's, it does have adhesive, but it's also got some little clips on it. So it does kind of clip into place as well. So you do need a little tool, something like this, a little spudger or something with kind of a flat end to help you get it off of there. Um, so I'm gonna go through and take the rest of the feet off and then we'll get to these screws underneath. All right, I got those pads off and you can see there's just a regular Phillips head screw inside of each of these holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those four screws out, but each one's gonna have one of those kind of screws. Right, I'm gonna take off the bottom plate. I got all those screws out. Um, I don't think it should be too hard. It's just getting my big old hands in there where I can get a hold of something to lift it. Uh, before I take it off, I will tell you, like you may see this little arrow here. Um, this, is, this is telling you which way is the, the thing is supposed to point uh, so when you put it back together, you can get it like that. And right now it's pointing at all of the stuff on the back of the device. I think it says front, strangely enough, but it is pointing at what I would call the back of the device. Okay, that took a little bit more effort than I thought it would. Um, it was in there 
pretty pretty tight and this the, the way it fits in here is very tight as well it'd be nice if they would give you a, a couple of tools with the kit whenever you buy it one to take the screws out uh two maybe something to be able to, to put in and, and lift with it you know to get that apart because as a home labber i don't know if everybody's going to have these kind of things i have these because we work on ios devices occasionally and, and computers but not everybody has this kind of a kit so it was not terrible for me to take that apart. But now that we've got it open, you've, you can see here we've got this uh, plate we've got to remove as well to get to where the SSDs go. So to get this plate off, there's some screws recessed down in this crack uh, all the way around it that you should be able to hopefully see. There's a couple down here and a couple up there at the top. So I gotta take those out and we'll get to the, get to the stuff underneath the plate. All right, I got those four screws out. It wasn't that bad. They are in kind of an awkward place. So again, you need a really small screwdriver. The, the screws are very tiny anyway, so you need something like you'd be using to work on internal computer components. The plate lifts off and I'm gonna flip that in a way that I can put it back. But you can see here, there's heat sink material here on the plate for you to put your SSDs in place. So it was sitting this way when I picked it up, so I'm just gonna flip it over so that the front side is flipped away from the front of the machine. And if we look in here, you can see they've already got an NVMe in here. So it did actually come with an NVMe, but I've got four that I wanna put in it anyways. I got four two terabyte NVMe's. So there's right now three empty slots, but I'm gonna undo this one. I'm gonna make four empty slots and then we'll put our own operating system on it. All right, I got this guy out. It's it's a little 256 gig uh, flash drive, which is nice for them to send that with it, you know, just in case I didn't have anything to do. But I went ahead and invested a little money and got some NVMEs that I was wanting to get anyways. So I'm gonna put in four two terabyte NVMEs to really make this function like a NAS and we're gonna see how it does. All right, if you're not familiar with NVMe drives, they do have uh, a little break uh, sometimes on one side, sometimes on both sides, just depends on the drive type. But in this case, you wanna make sure you get that brake in the right spot in the in the uh, slot where it goes. And in this case, this, the brake is to the right, like that, and give it a little push till it clicks. And then I've got the little screw that I took out of it when I was taking it apart. And I'm gonna put that right back in it. I'll just screw that down till it's a little bit snug. It doesn't have to be super tight or over tightened. I'm gonna do the other three the same way. And if you're wondering what I wanna do, I'm gonna, so this is a crucial. I'm going to put the other crucial right next to it, and then I'll put the other two uh, in those last two slots there. So we've got our four drive array there. I'm just going to flip the plate right back over, so just like this. And once you've got it on there, you should be able to check your screw hole alignment placement for those four screws that are going to hold it back in place. And then we need to get those screws and put them back in there. All right, now we've got this back cover, and remember it had an arrow that was pointing towards the back of this thing. Um, there's an arrow on here as well, and I feel like these arrows should line up. And since this says front, I really feel like it should go this way towards the front, and maybe it was just installed incorrectly previously. So I'm going to set it back on here and see if it'll go back into place. Yeah, and it seems to just kind of snap in there pretty easily. We've got that on. Now we need to get a little sticky feet back on top of these screws. Like I said, they seem to have a little clip where they kind of click into place here. So I want to make sure I get that right. So I'm finding that if I take uh, the top of the foot and bend it just a little bit here like this to put it in with both edges going down first and then I can kind of pop it in there and kind of feel it when it clicks into place. All right, we've got all four feet back in place. We've got our system ready to go, and I think we're ready to go set this thing up. So I've got a Ventoy USB key that I'm gonna put on it, and we're gonna, we're gonna boot it up and uh, check a few things. All right, I've got the box set up. I've got my Pi KVM connected to it so I can record the screen for you, and I've got a Ventoy uh, USB key plugged into the box. So we're gonna start that up and try to get Open Media Vault installed on this system. Um, I'd have to go and disable the secure boot for UEFI just to kind of get things moving the right direction, but I also think I had a thumb drive that was not working correctly. So I'm going to hit the power button here. It took about three seconds and then I hear the fans. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but they're pretty loud at first, but then they spin back down. So it does have some fans in it and it can cool itself if it has to. So we've got Ventoy, I'm gonna jump down here to Open Media Vault 7. And I'm gonna do this in Grub 2 mode. 
and we're going to do install and it is uh, English and United States for me and American English and if you've never done Open Media Vault, it's a pretty great little system uh, as well. It's got a web user interface for a network attached storage system. You can do Docker and all kinds of things in it, so it's pretty nice. Uh, it's going to run through some configuration here. Now, it's going to try to configure the network, but I'm using the network port to go to the Pi KVM. So it's not going to be able to do that. Um, I'll have to set up Wi-Fi on it once we get into Open Media Vault um, user interface uh, or, or unplug it. I guess once, once I've got it set up, I can set it with a static address. So we'll get everything ready. Uh, but from that point forward, we should be able to get everything to run the way we want it to. Uh, we'll select our time zone. So I'm in central time. So it remembered that I was in the United States. So it didn't even ask me about being in the Americas. That's nice. Uh, more than one storage device has been detected. Please ensure you select the correct device for the operating system in the following list. Uh, to prevent data, uh, data loss. Okay, if you can't identify the correct storage device, then shut down the system and unplug all storage devices except the one you want to use for the operating system. Okay, we can do that. Continue. So here we can see that it picks up on the NVMe drives uh, and it's got 0 in 1, 0 in 2, or 0 in 1, 1 in 1, 2 in 1, and 3 in 1. And they're all 2 terabyte. Um, these are the crucials here and these are the other ones here. Uh, select the disk to partition. So we're just going to use this first one here, this 2 terabytes. So it's moved on to installing the system, which is great. It's going to take a little bit of time. It shouldn't take very long. I mean, it's going from USB 3 to the internal drive there, and it's a, it's a flash drive, so it should be fairly quick. I've been running the AFRO K100 NAS that has the four SSDs in it for a little over a week, and it's been performing great. Um, you can see right now I've got two streams running, so I've got one on this tab here, and I've got one on my machine over uh, to the right of me. Uh, and one of them's running a fairly small stream. The other one's running one that's got a pretty high bit rate. So you can see the CPU is up here at around 90, but it, it runs that whether you're running one stream or two. Um, I'm going to try this on my phone as well. So I'm going to start it up. So you can hear the beginning music there. I'm sure from my phone, I'm going to turn it down while that plays. But it seems to be streaming this movie uh, on top of the other stuff that's already streaming just fine. I haven't seen a glitch yet. I can look over to my right and see the movie playing on my screen to my right, and it's going fine. Uh, the, it's a video or a, 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 a TV show. Everything's playing really nice and smooth. Without issues so far, I'm pretty happy with the way that it's performing. Again, uh, this just kind of goes up no matter what. So I've got multiple streams going at this point. I've got it going over my network or my Wi-Fi. Seems to be handling it just fine. Um, definitely solid state disk drives are super, super useful whenever you're talking about streaming media. Now the expense definitely goes up as you want to get larger sizes. So I bought two terabyte drives. Now those are a little more expensive, but I'm very fortunate that I've got patrons who support this channel that allow me to buy this hardware to work with and try to test on and give you guys this information about. So um, thank you so very much for that. But you know, um, I'd say two terabytes across uh, four slots, you know, using that as a NAS, knowing that for sure that you've got something else backing it up somewhere uh, is really a great, great option for a media server. You could use this just as a storage NAS as well. You could definitely do more like a RAID uh, 10 where you've got duplication of data and you're getting it striped across different devices. Um, lots of different things that you could do with something like this. I think it's a really, really cool device. Like I said, this, the build is solid. I do hear the fans just barely. Uh, you probably can't hear them on the mic. Um, it is audible, so don't feel like, hey, I'm going to set this in my living room and it's going to be great. I'm never going to hear the fans. I mean, I hear them. They're not super loud. I wouldn't say they're super annoying. And again, I'm coming from the reference of having had giant servers sitting right here in a rack next to me running for a long time. Those had loud fans. These fans are very quiet, but they definitely spin up when it starts trying to run everything. Um, so I wanted to kind of let you see what this looks like just from the output graphs and stuff like that. I mean, it's really doing a terrific job. It's not running too hard. It's, it's doing pretty well. I've moved a lot of media to it at this point. Again, the RAM usage is next to nothing. I mean, it's just not changing at all. So I'm really, I'm putting this through as much of the paces that I can imagine to put it through. And the nice thing is the streams start within a second or two. I mean, it just takes no time at all for them to start. So I recorded the system being started up, uh, plugged into my power monitor. And you can see there, it 
kind of jumps around, but it gets up around 18, 17, you know, in that range. And then as it starts to idle down there, it goes to 21. So as it's powering up, it goes, to, you know, kind of jumps around to different wattages. But once it actually gets powered up and starts to idle, it starts to drop down and we see that it kind of settles around five and six. Now it'll jump up a little bit again here in a minute, but I do hear the fans turn off just as it does that. And we'll really kind of see like, okay, this thing's starting to settle. And once that happens, I think it's probably got everything started up. It's, it's of course starting up Open Media Vault and starting up Jellyfin and you know checking all the information that's on those drives. So it just takes a minute, uh, probably took, uh, honestly it was probably started up a long time ago, but there you see it jumped to 11 and then it kind of settled back down and eventually it just kind of settles right in that 5.7 to 6 watt range. So 6 watts when it's not doing anything, um, pretty great. So we're going to also look at what does it look like once I start actually running media through it. So here I started up one stream, you can see it jumps up to about 20 watts, maybe a little bit higher. But it starts to settle back down after a minute to about 15 watts, 14 watts there. And lasts like this for a few seconds, but not super long. Um, after it gets about this far, you know, 14, 15 watts, it kind of stays there for a minute. So here I start up another stream, and you can see that it actually had settled back down to about 7 watts or 6 watts. So... After it gets everything buffered, it seems like it really settles back down. It doesn't take as much uh, power. Now you'll see it jump up occasionally, but uh, for the most part, it stays down around at 6 or 7 watts, even with two streams going, which is pretty nice. That tells me that I'm using very little power to do something that used to take a ton of power to actually get that done. And for me, that's a huge value. So, yes, I spend a little money to get the device and get the drives, but at the same time, the amount of money I'm going to save over time by using a device like this is really gonna pay for itself over time I mean because you're talking pretty big savings at least where I live in the US uh, I'm sure in Europe electricity is also not cheap so if you're looking for one of these devices if you're looking for something to replace what you've got or something just because you've, you're just not getting into home labbing um, definitely think about this I know there's an investment involved with it but uh, right now I mean really really great and again this does not come with an OS or anything like that you just put your own OS on it, so I really like, kind of like that because I get to choose what I want. I get to choose a great open source uh, operating system that I want. You can use Rockstore, Open Media Vault, or TrueNAS, or you can just put Ubuntu, or you can put whatever you want to on it to serve up that data, just whatever you're comfortable setting up, and then go out there and really kind of set up whatever services you want to have in your home lab. If you just want this to be a backup system, you can just set up it up as a, on a TrueNAS system and just have it run as a backup system. I mean, it's really really pretty nice and and again the 2.5 gig uh, you know network stuff is great a 10 gig would have been a nice option at least uh but you know 2.5 gig and anything to sneeze at i mean like i said my network is only one gig so i can't do anything faster than that anyways but uh yeah definitely for those that are looking for enterprise stuff uh the 2.5 gig will help uh for the ie for guys a 10 gig would be really great to have an add on there or as an option to you know, adjust that to 10 gig, that'd be really nice, uh, you know, have that as a separate option for a purchase. Uh, I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, I think this is a really, really cool system. I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. Um, if you if you go out and buy one, let me know. Just put a comment in and let me know you, you went out and, and grabbed one. Uh, really, really cool, really, really great. If I'm missing something you'd like to know about, let me know what that is. I, I'm doing my best and I'm trying to learn how to do some hardware reviews in a little bit better way. I want to make sure I'm giving the details you want and I want to make sure that I'm giving you the information you need and for me it's about being able to run it with open source software being able to get it set up the way that I would want to run it in my home lab and feel confident that it's going to function in the way that I need I hope you enjoyed this if you did like subscribe tell your friends about it so they can come along in the open source journey with us and I'll talk to you next time